everyone. Um, thank you for joining me. My name is Casey. This is my channel. And today I wanted to surprise I'm on my bed again. This is my comfy spot. So today I wanted to talk about um, clairvoyance in terms of it being a, a, a gift and some of my um, one or two I'll just share one or two of my clairvoyant moments clairvoyant experiences um, to I'll share these things with uh, with you guys so that um, you have a understanding of what clairvoyance is so a clairvoyant is somebody that has a open pineal gland um, their third eye um, this the sixth chakra, the Ajna, is essentially open. Um, the third eye, uh, having a third eye opening is very tough experience. It's a very difficult experience. I've been through a third eye awakening um, because I've gone through a full spiritual awakening uh, and had it go all the way up to pass my crown. So uh, I wanted to address the third eye um, as a aspect of clairvoyance and as a spiritual gift that it can come online with um, the Kundalini awakening. And so um, if you are a really special person or a, if you wanna look at it like special or if you wanna look at it as like you're really unlucky, <laughs> You look at it a couple different ways. Um, a lot of people do not like their kundalini experiences. They find them to be very scary. Um, and uh, I have to say I've had two. And my first one was very confusing. I actually didn't know what was, I actually had no idea I had one until a, um, until I went to a, Reiki master and she advised me that she could see in my work field that I had something like a half It was like half done. It was like kind of like a half moon or a half pike Or something like that. It had essentially whatever had happened. It it did it did not it was it was actually the um, a negative form of it. It was the it was the um, It was the, the it was going the it had gone the wrong way I think is how she explained it and so a lot of times that can come about through trauma. Um, when we have a kundalini awakening that has descended instead of ascended, um, a lot of times it can feel like um, people will actually feel like they, they will be, um, the, the physical feeling of it is sort of like floating or very very high in the in the brain because of all of the adrenaline that's that's floating around and then um, it will actually feel you'll feel like gravity just feels very bizarre and it'll just feel like you're like just like you have landed on earth like for the first time um, so a lot of people will say you know they're like they're walk-ins or they have um, you know the their starseed walk-in and usually that is because they just don't they are there they can't make sense of the metaphysical experiences that they've been through either through trauma or through isolation um, so I'll explain that in in and since we are all experiencing some form of isolation at the moment maybe not as severe as uh, say like locking yourself in a cave for 40 days or something like that we're still all of us are experiencing uh, isolation why this isn't a big deal for me is because I have been I've, I've been through an experience where I was completely isolated from uh, the the world and and in a in a very small room um, just something that happens to people sometimes and um, that experience actually is the, the isolation experience was actually one of the weirdest 
um, hands down one of the weirdest things that I have ever been through. Um, it was, it, I, I would say that like for all of the psychedelics that I used to do when I was a kid and stuff like that, like this, this, this particular, uh, trip, there, there was no, there was no drugs for it. It was just, it, it, but it was the most psychedelic, one of the most psychedelic things I went through was, it was all due to, um, it, and it was psychedelic in like a very negative, <laughs> like it's like a very strange, bizarre occurrence. And so uh, a lot of times what happens with people in isolation, very uh, like, um, like, the, if you ever study like um, the 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 Egyptians and the way that they went into the king's chamber, um, the king's chamber actually um, it is talked about because um, Metatron is actually uh, Thoth or is thought to be um, the entity Thoth, and it is said through the king's chamber that they were actually able to. Um, connect to Thoth or Metatron um, through their experiences of isolation in the King's Chamber. And that actually is something that can happen even if you don't go to Egypt and go into the King's Chamber. You can just go into isolation and um, a lot of times, as strange as it seems, you'll actually get like visitors. Um, uh, the other, another thing that will happen or did happen to me in my isolation experience was um, something started happening with my ears. I've only been able to talk to one other person that, that actually knew exactly what I went through, not because he went through it, but because he was an attorney and he heard stories. And so I wanted to explain how, uh, how our senses change from an experience in isolation, how our senses actually open up and sometimes don't close based off of um, the isolation experience. So what ended up happening to me was that I was fine for the first three days, but by the fourth day, I was, um, I was actually um, hallucinating and, um, and, and I was actually hearing what kind of sounded, it was really weird how it, the sound thing had happened, but it kind of felt like if I didn't know any better, I would say that somebody was using like voice to skull technology on me in that place. But I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case. Um, but it, it did definitely seem like that. Um, there was a voice. So I, I, for a long time, I was hearing like, sort of sounded like a ball was being tossed or thrown or bounced around the room. And it, I, I was hearing the sound of like this basketball being like bouncing from one end of, it was of course an imaginary basketball, but it did sound like a basketball was being bounced from one part of this um, small room to another part of the small room. And um, that was a very strange experience. Uh, that basketball um, pinging sound went away after like maybe the eighth day, but it was like went it went on for so long that um, that I ended up not being able to sleep because I I just heard it. It was like there was just so much noise, um, and and I think I don't. I, I know that that is actually something a lot of other people say too, that there's a lot of noise um, when, when you, when you're, it's like the auditory hallucination aspect of um, the, the isolation experience is, is the strangest part of it. Um, the other part of it was that um, there was like a, a, it sounded like there was like a, um, a male, like a masculine voice like that was actually talking and um it was a very like robotic um sort of voice it sounded a lot like uh if you've ever heard of heard stephen hawking's on like um or like on or like it sounds it sounded a lot like those youtube uh robotic voices that um come on and talk like in the robot voice about the spiritual things that's sort of what it that's why, like, to this day, I can't really deal with those robotic voices on YouTube because 
that's what I heard. It was like, I couldn't really make out what was being said, but I could hear some sort of masculine voice, like talking. And um, I, it, it was just, it, so that was the auditory hallucination that I had was this um, like a Stephen Hawking's type, like ro robot voice, like um, that seemed to be just coming out of nowhere. Um, there was, uh, because of the um, isolation experience, plus, you know, you're also on top of it, you're, you're scared or you have adrenaline floating through your body. So with all those things, um, either, you know, somehow, some way, there, there was an experience where I was able to actually hear, um, like, I think with the Kundalini, you can actually see the future. You could there's you can get glimpses of clairvoyancy where you can see and hear something that could take place the next time you have another one. I don't know why that is. It is very bizarre, but it it does happen to people. Um, so I was I was actually for for like a few days, I had a uh, very high pitched um, woman, um, almost like talking on the telephone um, and I it was like I was overhearing her conversation that she was having to a friend and um, she was it was a very high-pitched uh, southern voice um, and and it, it sort of felt like she was right in the um, in the in this the room with me like it was so close so I was hearing this this very long conversation that she was having about her husband or her boyfriend and this other girl and it was like she was um saying something about does this girl know that we are getting ready to get married and then um and then I heard her say well then somebody better tell her and you know I, I was listening it was almost like I was listening to somebody's phone conversation and I you know you chalk a lot of the stuff up to the fact that you just went crazy until the actual situation occurs and then you're like that's what I was seeing hearing how wait how did I do that and so I want to explain that like uh, anybody who can meditate uh, intensely enough or puts themselves on a cave for however long can actually access if you go far enough in you you can actually access the 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 etheric realm or the akashic field and and sometimes there's a guardian or guide or whatever